Great Friday, and certainly, um, let me just also encourage you, you can cash out, go with the short code, star 439 hash. Please choose option two. You choose TV3, and then also you increase the number of tickets that you have, and then you'll be in a great position, as always, to become a winner. Now, when you go to the USD dashboard, you'll find that it gives you the opportunity for a ticket to be chosen. So, initially, you see five there. Please make sure you increase that ticket or you do it several times and then let's, let us have a, a great discussion. Good morning to you, uh, lawyer Paddy, lawyer Emmanuel Paddy. I wish you all the best. A great guy, great friend. And then also um, Justice Mingle, my former boss um, at the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. The rest of you who are watching us on social media, we uh, encourage you to share the stream with us and let's have some great conversations thereof. And um, I'm so good morning to Ellis Couture of Tema for my shirt, able to make it through the fabrics of Woodin this morning. Let me see who's wearing Woodin so far. Nobody else. Please, I encourage you to wear Woodin. Good morning to all of you. Uh, let me just. Good morning. To wear Woodin. Uh, mm. All right. Woodin is not cheap. Mm. Mm. Delali has joined us. Delali, this is my first time hosting you, right? Sure. Okay. How are you? I'm good. Yes, sir. Great, great. Lawyer like, Pierre Dankwa. Yeah. How are you? Great, great, guy. great guy. And then also lawyer Jantua Regla. And um, uh, since MPP boycotted us, though, uh, we had uh, <laughs> the Movement for Change, who were former members of the MPP. They oh. took their place. But subsequently, we've, uh, right. we've had MPP coming back. Awal Mohammed has joined us. Awal Mohammed. Alhaji. Are you an Alhaji? <laughs> Good morning. Allow, is he allow me to comment? No, today we are four, so if we say we'll comment. Uh, I'm very happy. I'm very no. happy that the MPP has listened. Uh, you know, I kept begging them to bring, to but come back. But it's not cannot represent eh? us because eh? they are no more. We are not talking about Frank. we are talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Frank is not MPP. Uh, uh, why would you are MPP. Is that the, is we, that we, you we took can, our place? Wait, we uh, can, uh, why, uh, why would I want to wait, represent wait, you? Can, we thank the MPP. Why would I want to represent you? We thank the MPP for listening and coming back. And we thank TV3 for expanding the table to accommodate MPP. Now we can talk. I think now we need enough time. Or yes, now is the time. It, it's becoming like key points. Uh -huh, but key yes. points will be on from 7 a.m. tomorrow to about 11 and hosted by Alfred. And uh, Alfred Akufio Kanse will be hosting as always. He's a regular host. Uh, Ivan Sibin Samba, you've joined us on Facebook. Please make sure you share. Uh, Nelson Akotia, you are saying it's a Friday. Please cash out. Let's have some great time. Prince Henry Kofod, you're also joining us. Um, Daniel Apaliok, Sherry Giovanni joining us, and so we're happy. Roja has also joined us, and please share the stream. Money, me, money, watching us from the UK. Today we're discussing... Our current desk stock, the latest we got from the finance minister and also the records of the Bank of Ghana indicating that it's 761 billion in excess as at end of July 31. Uh, should we be worried? We should be worried because uh, we had to go for the creditors to have or agree to have the payments structured. And so, as we say it in, in Chi, so to speak. But what we want to tackle first are concerns about discrepancies in the latest addition of names to Ghana's electoral register for the 2024 general elections, that's parliamentary and presidential elections. And already we'll take you through snippets of um, what has been dominating the discussion so far and um, just put them on the screen. The Electoral Commission says there's nothing wrong with the register. That's why they display it, etc. But the discrepancies, uh, for example... There are concerns that some names in some polling station in certain regions have been transferred without the um, doing or authorization of those who bear the names <coughs> to some polling stations in some other areas and even in polling stations in some other regions. This is what the Electoral Commission says. So just put it back on the screens. Uh, so we'll start with what the Electoral Commission is saying, basically. No, not this one. The one they say the letter, the, the one you, yeah. So the 2024 voters register is robust and credible. Ignore assertions that the voters register is not fit for the 2024 elections. Now, subsequently also, we noticed that uh, the 
continued by giving all the assurances Ghana's electoral com the rationale for exhibiting the provisional voters register is to correct errors and omissions it is only after all identified issues are corrected that the final register is printed for the elections this has been the practice since 1992 but within the period we also noticed that there was an arrest of an individual apparently who had the bvd um on him how can the machine used for registration, etc., be in the possession of somebody else. I made all the concerns ra raised about the misplacement of or, or how they've been stolen. Now, Mr. Ahin, who is with Kodeo, says this impacts the fairness and the credibility of the Electoral Commission and the perception whether it will organize a free and fair election. Delali, let me start off with you. You, you had raised key concerns alongside civil society. W what were some of the concerns you'd noticed? Um, good morning, uh, Roland, and good morning to your cherished viewers. Um, with respect to the Electoral Commission and the issues that have been raised, um, if you look at it very carefully, yesterday my parliamentary candidate, Honorable Felix Nakoyo, issued a statement, a statement that basically captures um, some of the discrepancies as far as the electoral um, voter is concerned, as far as the Utu senior constituency is concerned, where there are duplicates of um, what they call voter register, or people who were captured in the voter register. And um, that is not the only thing. Um, so when you look at, um, for instance, an electoral area that Jomes, we have a duplicate almost about 561. And when you go to Ion City, there's a duplicate <coughs> as well. And when you go to constituency like um, Honorable Ato Forcing constituency, where 2,000 voters' um, vote was transferred without their consent, out of the constituency and another 2,000 vote was actually transferred into the constituency when the NDC as a political party that happens to be a major stakeholder as far as the election is concerned is not finished with all these details. When you look at the voter register as being highlighted by the director of election Dr. Edward Amanimboma and his ABLE team, uh, we have almost about 50,000 people, ghost names, that is captured in the register. What the NDC is basically saying is that we have the strongest belief that when this election is organized on the altar of free and fair, the NDC have what it takes to win the next election. <coughs> and what we are basically seeing has been projected on the screen. I believe your producer will be projecting on the screen. You will see a so, visible... So, the, yeah. the, so we had duplicates or... The Electoral Commission said that's why they are exhibiting. What are the fears? What? The Electoral Commission said what? That that's is what? why they are displaying... Oh, the on, register. Roland, you, you notice that even when it comes to even the electoral commission, <coughs> making available to the NDC, the voter register, because they actually give us a timeline that they're going to make available to the NDC the voter register before the exhibition. The essence of that exercise is to, for the political party, right, to do a lot of forensic analysis of the register before the exhibition. So what the poly NDC is basically saying is this. There's a deliberate attempt by the electoral commission Right, not to furnish the NDC with the necessary information. Because we are talking about the fact that when you pick somewhere like a Utu Senior East constituency, where you have 561 duplicates in a particular electoral area, I give you a, a specific example with respect to Honorable Atu Forces constituency. How on earth do you transfer a vote of voters without their consent? How do you do that? It happened in the Northern region. How do you transfer a vote into a constituency without the consent of the political party? That is a major stakeholder as far as elections is concerned. And this thing has been It has to be with the consent <laughs> of the individual. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm talking about the fact that when you are doing voter transfer, because the individual you give them a daily printout. When we compare the daily printout to what the Electoral Commission has exhibited, it doesn't tally. So what we are basically saying is this. The Electoral Commission must be up and doing. The Electoral Commission must know that the election that we are going into, Roland, is not just an ordinary election. It's an election that has been touted as the second independent of the Republic of Ghana. It's an election that is meant to salvage Ghanaians from the excruciating hardship that we are going through. It's an election that is meant to salvage Ghanaians from the nepotistic government that we are currently experiencing. It's an election that is meant to do away with the daily corruption that we are experiencing. And I want the Electoral Commission to address itself with one thing. Maybe they have lost sense of history. In 2008, even though I was young, I was privy to some of the things that happened. The electoral commission should start asking certain questions. They should go and ask Atasia. When he was caught on tape 
when the NPP sat down to deploy a strategy, when Afrijan asked them that they claimed that they, uh, what they call NDC have maimed and killed some of their pooling agents in the voter region, they sat down in a room, has a plan that they are going to what they call the confinementity hospital mock to go and pick dead bodies to show it Afrijan as an evidence. Go on and ask Where's the, the tape. I say that I mean, there was a tape that was played. I mean, part uh, who has verified whether it's the voice of Atacha? Oh, I mean, he has not disputed that in respect. No, to that. I, I, no, I, Roland. I dissociate TV3. Roland. No, please. I dissociate TV3 myself from the statement that has been made. Roland. If you don't have evidence, you don't Roland. continue Roland. on the Roland. statement. Roland. Roland. What I'm saying please, is this. let's be on the straight and narrow. That, Mr. Delali. Oh, I understand. What I'm just saying is this prior to the 2008 election, a lot of things happened. The NPP yeah. must bear in mind. That all these things that happened, they were exposed because the very people who were even within the corridors of the NPP mm. needed a change at that time. In 2008, the NPP sat down, had a plan, a diabolic plan that, in fact, they are going to make sure Afari Jan, an injunction was placed on Afari Jan. For that matter, you don't be able to declare the results. By the time they get to court, NDC lawyers were already in the court. So, what I'm just trying to say is this when the people have resolved to change you, no amount of shenanigans. No amount of gerrymandering can save the NP from losing the 2024 election. Lawyer Pierre Damkwa, there are key considerations here. Um, which one should we take cognizance of? That prior to this, I mean the exercise, you have to finish all parties with a register. And now the bone of contention is, at least for the NDC, they said they just received it. Did you say a day before? Now, even... even the, the, did, you, did you say a day before? No, even the, the very day. It was, it, the deadline even expired before okay. we got it. Yeah. And then also before then, there are concerns that individuals have been appointed, aligned to the governing party, etc. And Mr. Hain says it, it creates the perception about whether the Electoral Commission is indeed going to be fair or not. So let me, let me wish you a good morning. A while here, a good morning, my senior brother, and then, uh, and, and then the people of Ghana, a good morning. <coughs> you see, the burden placed on the EC going to the 2024 election, in my personal view, is an almost impossible burden. Because ordinarily, the burden on the EC is not only to deliver an election that, that is free and fair but to deliver an, an election that is perceived to be free and fair. Unfortunately for the EC, due to no fault of the EC, the president has made her ability to deliver that burden almost impossible. How so? Now, the president has made uh, her ability to deliver that burden almost impossible because of the recklessness in his making appointments <coughs> or in making appointments of persons. Who are perceived to have partisan coloring. See, in his reckless decision to make appointments of people, of persons, who are perceived to have partisan coloring. Now, because of that huge burden, unfortunately, that has been placed on the EC. I, I, I would have thought that uh, they, would, they, would, they would take serious steps in, in, in alleviating the concerns of the people of Ghana. Mm in her ability to deliver an election that is perceived to be free and fair, in how she handles uh, pre-electionary issues. Because sadly, when we were doing, as in when we were doing the voter registration exercise, and as in, there were, there, were, there, were, there were serious issues raised, serious issues that, as in serious noises, which does not aid the easy in any way, in any shape or form, in her burden to deliver an election which is perceived to be free and fair. The issues concerning concern the BDVs, I think just last week we heard news that uh, some BDVs in, in Sawum have been found in the hands of some... Yeah, there's a gentleman, we can show uh, yeah, a yeah, picture yeah, of uh, yeah. just the BVD if we don't want to show his <laughs> yeah, face, for yeah. example. Just a picture of the BVD so, itself. So, you see, I've said this somewhere and I'll say it again. Because the EC is a human institution, Probably. So this is the uh, property of Ghana's electoral commissions and something like this. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, yes, specifically? yes. Last week, reports came that BDVs have been found in the hands of certain individuals. You know, some BDVs were reported to have, been, to have gotten missing about uh, two months ago. And then we, we, we see this uh, what's called issue. For me, what it does is to create a situation 
where in the minds of the ordinary Ghanaian, mm. in the mind of the ordinary Ghanaian, the election already seemed to be, as in, to, uh, 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 to be rigged. Already. And rigged? I'm already being in, being. Yes, I'm not saying, I'm saying that in the, the that, and, and see, yeah, let's be clear, I'm talking about perception here. Mm. Yes, and when you're talking about the electionary process, it's not just about uh, the seven of these when it's not a one day event. event, it starts, you, you understand. And I'm saying that the because the burden on the EC is not just to deliver an election that is free and fair, if that was a burden, there would have been a simple exercise. But the burden on the EC is to deliver an election which is perceived to be free and fair. Now, because of that burden, then in how she conducts herself, especially. Taking into consideration the fact that the president has made that burden, her ability to deliver that burden, almost impossible because of the perception that the president or the belief that the president has appointed persons who are perceived to have political clarity. Mm. So I would have thought that in how she handled herself, she would be very mind minded or mindful to be almost per a perfect in how she conducts herself, but already with these mistakes, probably they could be genuine mistakes. Probably, but are you going you to say they are genuine mistakes? I said probably they could be genuine mistakes, probably, but because of the surrounding circumstances, because of the reckless decisions the president made in appointing people who are perceived to have partisan coloring, who is going to believe that these mistakes are, 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 are genuine? Uh, or, or are innocuous. Who is going to believe? Especially taking into consideration issues that happened in 2020 regarding uh, what's called mistakes with figures. And then also, if you consider that in 2020, eight of our compatriots, eight, eight of our compatriots, eight souls, you eight are whose compatriots? I mean, you and I, <coughs> all of us, eight Ghanaian souls were lost. Just in this exercise of sharing your opinion, as to who don't don't even try it. Everybody will open their eyes. Now I'm not sure. Tell me if it is going to happen. The electoral commission said some time ago they want to finish elections by a certain time. Have they come up with that again? Oh, the one they they even wanted the three p.m. Yeah, no. three p.m. No, that no, has uh -huh. been no, uh -huh. that has not been agreed. By no. the and even the November date. So, also so, so all that is out of the yes, way. It's out yeah. of the way. So it has to be policed and has to be done according to plan. And please, please, please. Yesterday, the uh, IGP indicated to us that they are going to do all they can to make sure that there's no violence. And when violence starts, where does it start? It doesn't start when people are going to vote. It starts after counting and, you know, figures. People see figures once at the police station. Then when it gets somewhere else, it's something else. It has to be policed and policed well. Okay. What do we need? We need to save Ghana. We need 2025 to be saved because the problems we are under. Huh. Okay. All right. So uh, the second issue is about uh, our debts and the debt crisis, so to speak. Uh, let's put on the screen what the finance minister did say. End July 2024, our debt already is $761 billion. Now, on the streets, the dollar is 16 Ghana cities. If you want to buy one dollar now. Do we have a crisis on our hands or we don't? Or, as the finance minister said, some weeks ago uh, so two or three weeks ago i mean we're just under recovering of course we have uh, creditors that we've told them and Dalali that we need to restructure the debt so we have both domestic and then external but everything is fine that's the assurance we've been given should we be worried or not roland uh, four minutes on this please roland four, four minutes okay I'll, I'll do just roland the fact of the matter is that where is Madam Esla Usu? I mean, Madam Esla Usu actually uh, told us about the fact that if governance is all about borrowing, her 17-year-old son would have been in a better position to Who govern. Who said? Madam Esla Usu, that's what she said. What's your point with this? My point is this. If indeed there's anything called borrowing, it should not actually future as far as the MPP is concerned. 
Alaji like Mahmoud Baumia told us that in fact he has had the opportunity to work at Bank of Ghana before. He thinks we can industrialize this country without borrowing. You see, when I was coming, because we we're going to discuss about this topic, this is Alaji Mahmoud Baumia lectures. Which that lecture? Was, um, that was uh, what they call Central University Distinguished, uh, what they call, the IMF build up with the Anchor Home. The series? Yes, which of yes. them? Which of the series? That was uh, March 20, uh, 24, 2015. 2014. 2014. Okay. This is 2015. This is Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Ghanawi again. This one, he was talking about the state of the Ghanaian economy. The places that you make reference. And this is also about Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Ghanawi. He was talking about the restoring the value of the city. Oh, you had to print all this? Oh, yeah, I have to print because I've been reading through it and because I want to understand why the man, Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Ghanawi, how he told a palpable falsehood when he was then in a position. And this is what we are currently witnessing. You see, Roland, when you talk about borrowing, under the NPP, just less than five years, Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Baumia, President Anadu Danko Akufuato, when we have access to the Eurobond market, have borrowed to the, so far, Ghana have borrowed to the $13 billion. Out of that $13 billion, President Anadu Danko Akufuato, less than five years, together with Alaji Mahmoud Baumia, have borrowed $11 billion. And that includes the $2.5 billion, frankly, Tepelton Bond. When you compare that to President John Mahama, Emi Sata, and Professor John Ivan Satamis, for the eight-year period, the euro market borrowed $3.5 billion. What's your point? My point is this. The only reason why President Anadu Dankwa Akufadali Maimumba have the appetite of borrowing is because they are profiting from borrowing. Kendall Foriata, the former finance minister, we know the amount of money his company has made as a result of borrowing. So the appetite for borrowing, unlike what we witnessed under President John Drummond in Mahama, that we can point to the rate hospital. We can point to visible and verifiable project, the KJTR market, the Kaswa interchange, the Impakadai, what we call railway line, the Pokuasi interchange. We can point to visible, verifiable project, that money was, the Terminal 3. But when it comes to the MPP, the essence of borrowing, the rationale behind borrowing, because they want to enrich their cronies. That was the only reason why they were borrowing. So at the end of the day, I listen to the finance minister talk about the fact that because of the exchange rate. Is that not what the finance minister said? Roland, March 13, 2016, Alaji Mahmoud Bamiya, together with President Anandu Danko Akufuat, they went to Abusu Kwan. And Alaji Mahmoud Bamiya, look at the people at Abusu Look at them in the face. These are people who heavily depend on dollars. He said, listen, President Mama is incompetent because at that time, when they were buying $10,000, they have to cough up an amount of 37,200 Ghana cities to buy $10,000. Today, as we speak, the same Abu Sokan's paper that watching me this morning need to cough up 160,000 Ghana cities to buy the same $10,000. The man that told us, according to this series of lectures that he organized, and told us that it doesn't matter how suitable all the indicators are faring, the only indicator that proved that indeed you are a total mess that proves that indeed you are incapable of managing the economy is the exchange rate. So why is the finance minister telling us our debt has ballooned to 761 billion because of the exchange rate? Why is he telling us? They must be ashamed of themselves. The same group of people who told us, when you look at this particular lecture organized by Dr. Elijah Mahmoud Baumia, when our debt to GDP was 67%, he said Muhammad was incompetent. When our debt was around 67 billion, he said President Muhammad was incompetent. Today, as we speak, our debt is 761 billion. When you take the 120 what are you talking about? The you, figures you're using, are you talking 122 billion or I'm talking in NDC will be quick to them. Debt accumulated there from the days of independence to the time President Mahama what they exited office with 122 billion. Okay. Today, according to the finance media, it's 761 billion. Is that not it? Mm. When you do the deduction, you are getting 639 billion borrowing, additional borrowing that have been added to this debt. Finally. In 2016, Dr. Elijah Mahmoud was an organized series of lectures. He told the good people of this country, if we are supposed to divide the debts of this country among the population of Ghanaian, everybody is entitled to pay a debt of 4, 000, owing 4,200 Ghana cities. Today, as we speak, when you do the computation, myself and you, and the small boy watching me as this morning, is owing 25,000 Ghana cities. What level of incompetence is this? So you see, when we are talking about borrowing, it's self-inflicted because this group of people, what they have done, the appetite for borrowing is because they want to enrich their cronies, because they want to profit somewhere like Ken Ophoriata. That is the essence. That is the rationale behind the borrowing. If you look at other countries, I mean, some of them even exceed the relation or the ratios 
in relation to their GDP when it comes to that? I think the key consideration, if you tend to look at what the indicators are, is if you're able to service the debts. Mm -hmm. And now we have to go to the external creditors, domestic ones, to restructure. It means that we're just, I mean, virtually insolvent. <laughs> and at the end of the day, so the key consideration is, shouldn't we be doing something about it instead of continuously living the way we are? Cert certainly. Certainly. Uh, uh, you take Japan. I think Japan's debt to GDP ratio is over 200%. The U.S.'s debt to GDP ratio is over 100, 100%. So why are we not saying that their debt levels are not sus uh, mm. sustainable? Mm. Where do they borrow from? So you take Japan. Where do they borrow from? Japan largely borrows from their domestic market through bonds and then they are they are they are and and, 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 and like you said because they borrow from their domestic market and really it's, it's even a reflection of the confidence the citizens themselves have in their economy they're also able to service because they don't need to go and take what's called foreign exchange from anywhere and when you take uh Ghana's sit situation I think about 58 percent of our debts are external not so mm. Now, when, when, uh, when we borrow, what do we essentially use the, uh, the, uh, the monies for? Remember the, what's called, Kuku uh, Kwaten, said that what we do is that we borrow yeah. to pay... He issued a strong warning and a missive. Yeah. Almost yeah. like a, a, a prophet. Now, you go into our constitution, the 1992 constitution, chapter 6, under the directive principle of state policy. It's out the economic principle that, uh, or economic objective. Of the country, and let me put some uh, something there. So you go to 36 to B, or uh, as in be before I could it be, they say the state shall in particular take unnecessary steps to establish a sound and healthy economy, whose underlining principles shall include. So the underlining principles that shall include the economic objective of this country includes you go to the B, affording ample opportunity for individual initiative. Creativity in economic and fostering the use of what is fiscal under your expenditure, uh, your, uh, your expenditure. How do you manage your uh, uh, debt? How do you mobilize revenue? You, 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 you How do you handle interest rates? How do you handle inflation? Because all these things uh, impact impact the flow of or the supply of money, which impacts the economic environment. Now, when Anado took over in 2017, what was that debt to GDP ratio? Because the minister is saying that the reason why our debt has ballooned is because of the exchange rate. Now, let's in 2017 or in 27 December, what was the exchange rate? It was about let's say four. I think it was four, 4.2. 4.2. You understand? What was our debt to GDP? In 2016, it was 56%. That's in 2016, it was 26%. Now, <laughs> that's a lie. Listen, so he can verify. In 2016, our debt to GDP ratio was 56%. Now, by 2022, 2022, when the city tanked, you understand? Because there are reasons why we were frozen out of the capital market. And one of the fundamental reasons why we were frozen out of the capital market was the unsustainability of our debt levels. Now, what does, what, 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 what those high debt and reckless debt, irresponsible borrowing does for, for either one, you crowd out the private sector, so the economy won't grow. The economy will shrink. Mm, because the cost of money will go up. Mm. Two, you lose investor confidence. Now, check the rate at which FDIs have been flowing into the country. In 2017, Ghana had an FDI inflow of about 3.5 billion. In 2023, it, it has reduced to 1.5 billion. 1.5 billion. Now, what is the extent of our export? So, because at the end of the day, when it comes to the exchange rate, one of the key factors is how you're able to get foreign exchange into your uh, economy. Have we not said that we have a problem with us, the structure of our, of our economy and that there's a need for us to diversify off cocoa? When this government came, after the trade minister having comprehensively given them the 10-point industrialization and, and agenda, eh, 
which includes a, 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 a policy that says that you must diversify from cocoa, pharmaceutical, uh, the auto industry. What has government, how has government used its fiscal policy? What has been government's contribution eh, in terms of where it places money in diversifying the economy of Ghana? What wisdom, what sense is in spending five, uh, over five billion, five billion dollars on NAPCO, five billion Ghana cities on NAPCO? To create jobs. How, how many jobs have NAPCO? Created. They are temporary, so over uh, hundred thousand. One, they are temporary. How that five billion? How how much has it added to our GDP? As against a very transformational pol policy like the one, the one where government just spent about four hundred million. When you took the automotive industry sector, what has been government's contribution there? So at the end of the day, this exchange rate situation the minister is talking about is a situation that they themselves have created because of. A reckless management of our economy, reckless borrowing, which has created a poisonous economic environment. Like I'm saying, FDI and our can check that in 2016 we had about 3.5 billion FDI inflow into Ghana. In 2023, we had just 1.5 billion. The investors have lost confidence in Ghana. Nobody wants to put money in, in, into Ghana. The economy of Ghana has lost credibility. And the, because the economy of Ghana has lost credibility, you, you, you find evidence of that in how your exchange rate is performing. And that's why the, the, the vice president said that if the fundamentals are yeah, weak, yeah, then the exchange rate will expose you. Mm -hmm. So the minister shouldn't be, come and be telling us what he's, he's <laughs> telling us. Clearly, they have no clue. They've turned the economy. They've destroyed this country. <laughs> they've created a poisonous <laughs> economic environment. You, you, you understand? How can you just find Bank of Ghana borrowing over 60 billion? Alan, you know, uh, no, I'm, 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 <laughs> when your colleagues are talking and then you tend yes. to giggle, it shows Nobody a modicum ended. of He's disrespect towards them. No, 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 I am telling you that it is disrespectful to your co-partner. When you are talking, they don't giggle, they don't mimic, they don't make noise. Please just make sure that you restrain yourself from doing that. Okay. okay. You are coming to me. Yeah, 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 please, yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. So, you see, they have, they have, they have turned the economy. They've caused the economy to lose, uh, to lose its credibility. Yeah, yeah, you understand? So, you shouldn't come and tell us that the reason why the debt levels uh, is because of the exchange rate that you yourself turned. Like I'm saying once again, there'll be a day of reckoning. See, there'll be a day of reckoning. That day of re on, on, and, and on that day, it won't just be Nanado's head on the, on the trouble. That will be the MPP, people like Awa, who are enablers of this crime <laughs> that has been done to, toward, toward this country. Mm -hmm. And when that day comes, when that day will come, when that day comes, when we hold their balls accountable to this evil they've done to our country, I hope I work giggles. That's what I'll say. I will have to giggle because the person speaking right now, mm. his leader has been a cabinet minister for seven years in this government. Why oh. wouldn't I like, giggle? How do you mean giggle? He has you been mean a Alan cabinet Chiamanti. minister. Yes. For seven years in this government that he's saying that we have tanked the economy. So I will have to giggle because someone like this is telling us this. Why, would, why wouldn't I giggle? <laughs> That's one. Two is that as a result of the lies that they have been put out by the NDC and others, Dubawa has been able to do some work on the debt to GDP ratio. A anyone can just go and check. If you check the annual debt report submitted by the finance minister in 2016, Ghana's debt to GDP ratio was 73.2%. Uh, mm -hmm. This is something that uh, Dubawa <laughs> has, work, has done a lot of work on it. So it was corroborated by IMF. And Statistica, you can check right now. You can just Google and check right now. That is one. <laughs> Two is that, you see, in terms of debt, it is true you see 761 today. But you see, the level of movement. 761 what? Billion. Ghana City. But if you go in dollar terms, I'll, 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 I'll come there. But I'm saying that in 2009, the total debt from independence to 2009 was 9.8 billion Ghana CD. The NDC moved it to 122. If you check in terms of folds, that is 12 folds. 12 folds, because 
9.8 times 12 is around 122. You 12 mean the percentage increment? Yes, yes, 12 votes. 12 votes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take 122 mm -hmm. to 761, that is about 5, 6 uh, votes. So the level of movement. You, who moved $8.1 billion to $34 billion, now our entire debt is $51 billion because we're borrowing dollars. <laughs> if they will want to do propaganda, they move into cities. But if you check the dollar, it was 8.1 you met. You met 8.1. <laughs> you move it to 34, uh, 34 billion. Now it is 51 percent. Now, when you check what the finance minister has said, that is an absolute truth. Because even when you check your flyer that you have, that we shared before we, we even introduced the thing, he says it is largely attributed to interest rate some please especially put the, the movements please now. put the finance minister is that the same exactly is, yes i think the same, <laughs> the, the same is flyer. this comfortable for you yes 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 okay so when please you put check, it on the screen last year last year the finance minister's plan so the finance minister yes, is saying the that graphics it is the exchange rate that is that has ballooned it not necessarily an amount of money that we have really who is uh, responsible for managing so the exchange I'll come, rate yes i'll come i'll come there so uh, when you check last year last year the total in terms of uh, dollar rate is 53.5 billion you should see an appreciation not a depreciation but when we were able to manage and there was some stability with with the with the exchange rate it came to 51 billion dollars this year when you check but last year the the, the city equivalent was around 58 587 billion ghana city and the dollar equivalent of 53.5. Now, today, it is 761 billion in, 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 dollar, in CD term. But in dollars, it is 51. It tells you that indeed, he, he's, uh, uh, it is a point that he has made that it is indeed the, the dollar. When you check the management of the CD, CD and dollar, between 2017 and January 2022, between 2017, that we picked at a 4.4, to January 2022, it was six cities in January 2022. Six cities. In February, March, there were exchange rate volatilities across the world and inflation. This is a fact. In 2022, I'm telling you that between 2016... Due to... Due to. It's, yeah, Russia, Ukraine war. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia says... <laughs> Dr. Mahmoud Baumia says... How do does COVID, Russia, Ukraine war <laughs> skips everybody around us and yeah, then yeah. affect Ghana? In, in your bid to do propaganda, you said he said Russia, Ukraine. He didn't say that. Yeah, sure. In I'm only trying to, to do just propaganda. I'm, in I'm your just to do propaganda. doing transposition. In your bid to do propaganda, you are saying that no, no, he, I'm not doing he, propaganda. He mentioned, I'm only he mentioned saying Russia, Dr. Ukraine. Dr. Dr. Mahmoud 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 never said Russia, Ukraine. Yo, certainly, he never said that. Yes. But I'm saying that... You wanted to do the propaganda... Exogenous factor, certainly. There so, were no exogenous factors in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> which is exogen prices were which, as a, which as a new factor? Uh, commodity prices are in 2016. Were not high. In 2016, 2015, 2016. That's were a not lie. There. That's a lie. They were not high. Okay. There were stabilities. It was doom so induced crisis in this country. That was the reason Dr. Bamiya has said that. Uh, uh, well, it is self-inflicted. <laughs> but this one, I'm telling you that between 20 and before the exogenous shocks. This one, we have no role to play. I am saying, oh, but we have roles to play. I'm saying that we have been able to manage it from 2017 to 2022 <laughs> for six years. The decision was not even up to two cities. For six years, you can check. But in 2022, almost every economy in this world went into crisis because of inflation and exchange rate volatilities. UK had to change three prime ministers within 2022. Three prime ministers within 2022. And we maintained ours. Yes, because we have a tenure. So, we, we, so we've done better. Someone has, has a, 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 a security of tenure. So definitely. But right. they changed three because of economic problems. You understand? So in 2022, we had issues. To the extent that in 2022, as of December, it went around 16 cities per, 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 uh, uh, per dollar. One, one city was around 16 cities. Today, two years on, there is relative stability because you quoted 16 today. 
in 2020 yes i'm saying that you mentioned you quoted this thing today in 2022 <laughs> as a december it was around 16 cities who created the 2022 situation <laughs> ah, but i told you that even in the uk and us they also had high, hyper inflation <laughs> <laughs> which is which is really uh, <laughs> pointing to the fact that they even change prime ministers. I told you this, and today the UK economy is even in in, in, in recession. <laughs> yes. Okay. So okay, these are issues that had come. So but fortunately, exogenous. For, for, fortunately, mm -hmm. the economy is picking up because when you check in 2016, when we uh, we had 122 uh, 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 billion as uh, 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 debt. The per capita income, per capita income at that time was thousand nine hundred dollars. Today, per capita income is two thousand four hundred dollars. And that, and, that so there's, and, the, and the purchasing power of that per capita income has, has moved up because I'm, I'm, I'm talking in relation to dollars, not cities. With that is one. Affected. Again, we have built the economy twenty billion addition to the economy because we made an economy which was fifty six billion. Now it is seventy six <laughs> billion. Again, we have invested heavily. In health that no other government in the history of this country has ever completed 50 hospitals before we have done 34 hospitals complete 111 are on at various stages of completion when we came in 2016 uh, how many hospitals are we building in total 111 <laughs> 111 111 at various stages of completion when we came in 2016 uh, astrotefs were only three privately owned today we have 150 we have built more stadia than any other government. We have built six new mini stadia to the extent that Volta region has a stadia. Again, police service has been retooled. 900 cars, 4,000 motorbikes. The IGP has said that there is no government in the history of this country who has even given the police service even up to 2,000 uh, motorbikes. Again, three helicopters for the first time in the history of this country. Police has three for helicopters. We have 1,000 housing units. Fire service training school had oh, well, you can only one. Everything. From, from Kwame you. Nkrumah up to today, <laughs> we you. have only one. Okay. Today, we have increased it by three. Okay. One in Yadu and Kwanta, one in uh, Northeast, and one okay, well, in Chebi. So it tells you that we have built right. the economy. We have a lot of to show mm. with the 761 that you see there. All right. Uh, uh, well, um, we borrow in what currency? Dollars. How do we pay? We, we, we pay in dollars. How do we mop up to pay in dollars? Yes, we, we do with the city. That's why I did analysis of the city and the dollar. Okay, I, I, right. I, I did the so, two, so we borrow in dollars, analysis. we mop up in city. Yes. So if the city is now, now we are even it turning, it, we now, now, now we are even turning it, we're doing it's, it to gold uh, because the gold for uh, oil and the uh, gold for reserve is something uh, that we're using under Baumia to I have to give you only two minutes. My time is up. Why? You like our talk. Oh, but you are in opposition, so definitely you have to. Definitely what? Why are you scared of the three people? No, but you run know. away, but you've come back. Too. That's what you call it. So, <laughs> let me tell him: don't compare yourself to what Nkoma did, because you haven't gotten anywhere there. You keep saying that since independence, since independence, you can't compare the two, two different things. Nkrumah During Nkrumah's, we, uh, uh, when Nkrumah <laughs> was here, we had six ships, six ships. You mean Black Star Line? Black Star Line. <laughs> We had hospitals. We had so and don't let don't them. let oh please don't let us go there. So <laughs> if Awal is saying what he's saying, why do Ghanaians feel the way they feel? If Awal is saying they've done X, they've done what they did, why are Ghanaians feeling the way they feel? Whose job is it to uh, check the exchange rate? Whose job is it to check the depreciation of the city? Whose job is it to make sure? that we are not import-led. Whose job? Have you been able to curtail it? If you haven't been able to curtail it, then you failed. You failed you as a government. For two years, oh, wow. You have failed. For two you years. Are, please. Oh, oh, it's oh, not when you were talking, it, he, he, please, no, please, please. It is but not, it it is not <laughs> the containment. It is how has it helped the Ghanaian. Let's go down to brass tacks. The Ghanaian's pocket. Can the Ghanaian afford Three square meals a day. Mm. Can the Ghanaian take his child to hospital? Can the Ghanaian pay transport prices? Can the ordinary private sector guy buy the fuel that he needs to do his business? Mm. Food inflation. Where is it today? Please.
Right. Stop that. I'm, I'm not. Let it, me finish. It's, it's, sorry. Oh, According to statistics yeah. service, Our it is coming yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Inflation is coming down. According to uh, the latest, uh, you know uh, the danger. You yeah. know the danger we are in. Yeah. If for anything at all, what's wrong eh? with that? If for of... anything at all, what the finance minister is saying, how are we going to pay back? And I, I, I even feel that he has, he has, he has been economical with the truth where the debt is concerned. We have interest rates to pay on our debt. Is it included? Is it included? That figure is bigger than the seven whatever he's talking about. And the areas where we would have mopped up gold, cocoa, oil, where is it today? Exploration to production, the last eight years, have we done any? How much money is coming in? Oil, uh, gold Please continue. In continue. Please. It's not the biggest gold refining. Where is, the, where is the money? Continue. Gold, uh, <laughs> cocoa. We were exporting how many? Last year, how many did we export? The previous, how many did we export? Where is it today? 400,000 metric tons. Isn't that a reduction in, in, in money? And then he tells us about what? Domestic, uh, uh, the domestic, what did he say? He said, Factors include city depreciation, disbursements from multilateral institutions, and domestic financing of the budget. Are they not competing with the private sector? Are they not competing with the private sector? So this private sector that you want to now, Dr. Bamiya is saying that they would give everything to the private sector. Can they compete with government? Can they? Okay. Look, Roland, let me finish by saying, unfortunately, they have failed. They should prove to that's, us. That's, that's they should prove to us that they can turn this economy around in four months. Did you prove to us? IMF is saying that All the right. economy is turning around. I have this Please. one from Electra, <laughs> Electra in Financial Economics who says, exogenous factors include international commodity price fluctuations or reductions such as in cocoa, crude oil, gold, etc. Uh -huh. These commodities are collectively called international commodities mm -hmm. such that prices are determined by international factors. It is therefore not true that there was no exogenous factors in how the economy performed between 2013 and 2016. Thank you, my uh, and, and then also, um, okay.